good morning. So um, a few days after the massacre in Parkland, Florida, another news story broke. And many people have now been reporting on that. And I want to just say huge kudos to those beautiful students who are keeping their school shooting in the news. And they're going to continue to do so until change is made. And I'm glad of that. But another story took over, and this is important as well, because it has to do with what a lot of these students are planning to do to get their point across, which is vote. They're planning to vote in November. They're planning to vote as soon as they can, and they're going to vote with their conscience. They're going to vote with things that they want. They're going to vote for candidates who have nothing to do with the NRA. And they're going to expect as most voters do, that their vote will count. So this is what we're going to talk about today is Russian meddling and, yes, I believe, affecting our 2016 election. Now, I'm going to say something that many of you don't expect. This is not a Trump bashing show. I know many of my viewers out there are Trump supporters, and you were Trump supporters from the beginning. Whether or not it was because you just liked Donald Trump, or whether it was because you are a diehard Republican and always will be, and you will never be able to cross party lines and vote for a Democrat, even if the person running for the Republicans is an idiot. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not Trump bashing. It's really not. But there were people who made up their minds before the first debate. There are people who didn't even have to watch a debate. Some people vote sadly, for um, one issue or two issues. Many Republicans will vote Republican simply because they want gays put back in their closets and they want women to be forced to give birth to children they don't want. They want to control women's reproductive organs and they want gays to be treated like no-class citizens. Now, I'm guilty of that, too, because many times I vote Democrat because of these same issues, because I, I am a woman and I don't want the government telling me what's going to happen to my own body. That's my choice between me, my doctor and my family. And I certainly don't want my gay friends and family members to be put back into their closets. So I guess we're all guilty of voting on certain issues. OK, I used to vote for the candidate that promised me national health care, and that didn't turn out so well for me when I voted for Obama. But again, I was willing to vote for a Republican if I had had a decent Republican candidate, because I'm in menopause now. I'm not going to get pregnant. And sadly, I can no longer just vote along the lines of who's going to be pro-choice and who's going to be pro-life. I have to vote for me and my husband and our future. Because we're getting up there in age and we are talking retirement and we want our future to be prosperous. We want to have money when we retire. We don't want to be living on food stamps like many retired people have to now. So I was willing to vote for a Republican if a good Republican candidate had shown up. But I could never have voted for Trump. Again, not a Trump bashing show. It's not. I'm talking about why I voted for Hillary. Now. I know some of you who are Republicans probably did not read Hillary Clinton's book, Hard Choices. I read it. I've read all Hillary's books, except it takes a village because I don't agree with that, that shit. I don't think I'm responsible for raising strangers' kids, but that's another show. But I read Hard Choices, and I, uh, I didn't know if I was going to like it because I really wasn't that interested, but it was her chronicling of her being Secretary of State, and I found it fascinating. I learned so much, first of all, about what a Secretary of State does. But what's important for this show is let's just give Trump and his people the benefit of the doubt. They had no idea that Russia was going to do anything to try to get Trump elected. Okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that this thing started in 2014. Well, what happened in 2014? We started hearing that Hillary was going to run. And this is what I submit to you. It wasn't about Donald Trump at all. The Russians could have cared less. They didn't know Trump was running. They didn't say, oh, in 2014, let's get Donald Trump elected president because he wasn't running. 
But Hillary Clinton scared the shit out of Vladimir Putin. And here's why. If you read this book, for all of her flaws, and she does have them, for everything you disagree with Hillary Clinton about, she had Vladimir Putin by his KGB communist loving balls. And she let him know it. He wasn't going to get away with anything on her watch. And she scared him. Now let's look at what happens to people who scare Vladimir Putin or who go up against Vladimir Putin or dare to criticize Putin in public. Well, if you happen to be a Russian and you do that, bad things befall you. You get mysterious illnesses, you get poisoned, you get you accidentally fall out of a third story window. Your husband gets poisoned. Bad things happen in Russia if you go up against Vladimir Putin. But he couldn't poison Hillary Clinton, and he certainly couldn't push her out a third floor window while she was moving a bathtub. So instead, he decided that he had to make sure that Hillary was completely annihilated. He had to turn Democrats against Hillary Clinton. And to do this, he hired Russian nationals who have now been indicted by Robert Mueller to come to America, steal real American identities, IDs, social security numbers, the whole works, and pretend to rally against Hillary. At that point, it wasn't for Trump because we didn't know Trump was the candidate. And as Trump became the candidate and Trump started saying all these great things about his buddy Vlad, Putin got even more aggressive. He said, wow, Trump loves us. We really want Trump to be president. This is our best gift. Yeah, Trump being nominated was, was Vlad's Christmas present. It was a good gift. Because not only was Hillary not going to be president if he had anything to say about it, Vladimir Putin, but now, if Trump did win, the only other real choice for Americans, he'd have a buddy in the American White House. Gift, 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 all the way around. Vladimir Putin hired people to stage rallies. Now, remember, back in during the election, when Trump and some other Republicans said, oh, the Democrats are paying people to hold rallies for Hillary and against Trump. And it turns out the opposite was true. The Russians were hiring people, actors, who were not American citizens and supposedly could not legally vote to stage rallies for Trump and against Hillary. That's something that should worry you because some of you listened. And if you're trying to say, well, it didn't affect the vote, well, I can tell you from a personal standpoint, it did. Because I was speaking to personal friends and family members who up until September and October of 2016 were all Hillary all the way. They were voting for Hillary. They were appalled that their children couldn't watch a debate or listen to Donald Trump speak because of the things he talked about. The size of people's hands and blah, blah, blah. And people having affairs and blah, blah, blah. I mean, people were not letting their children watch the debates, even if it was a school assignment, because the debates were R or X-rated. They were all going to vote for Hillary. And then September and October happened. Yeah, James Comey didn't help in October. A lot of my friends and family members changed their minds after Comey came out with that, we're reopening the email investigation. But where did he get his information from? WikiLeaks. Where did WikiLeaks get their information from? Well, we don't know exactly. But it very easily could have been the Russians. Russian nationals were dressing up as Hillary Clinton in an orange jumpsuit. Americans were warned that if Hillary became president, she would not have any time to work for the people, for us, because she would be defending herself. She would have been indicted. Uh, she would have been in front of a courtroom with lawyers and testifying and under oath and subpoenaed. And she would have no time for us. And look what actually did happen with Donald Trump. 
again, I'm not bashing Trump, but this really happened. Every member of his White House team has a lawyer. They've been subpoenaed. Some are cutting deals so they don't go to jail because of things they did. Because they ain't going to jail for Donald J. Trump, which I don't blame them for. I wouldn't go to jail for any candidate or president. So these people, my friends and family, I heard their attitudes start changing. I'm really scared. I can't vote for Hillary. So what some of them did was they held their nose and they voted for Donald J. Trump or they just didn't vote. And let's look at what the election results actually were. If we did not have this antiquated, ridiculous system of actually what I, what I believe means every vote doesn't count, the Electoral College, Hillary Clinton would be our president right now. And she would be busy working for us because, as we know, she's not under indictment. She has never been accused or, or charged with any crime, unlike some in the Trump administration. So this is where we would be because, and this eats at Donald Trump every single day of his life. This is one thing he spends more time thinking about is he did not get the popular vote. More people voted for Hillary Clinton in this country than voted for Donald J. Trump. That is a fact. Numbers do not lie. Well, some of them might have, but they lied for Trump, not for Hillary. Or they did lie for Hillary. I mean, it depends how you look at it. At the end of the day, my state, Pennsylvania, in the last several elections, it's always gone blue for the Democrats. And all of a sudden, it went red. Now, that's interesting. Considering all the people in Pennsylvania I spoke to that swore one side up down the other that they voted for Hillary. <clears throat> and they have no reason to lie to me because I feel that your vote is your personal choice. And I'm not going to slam anybody necessarily who votes for a Republican when I vote the other way. I will slam anybody who either doesn't vote at all or votes because they don't know enough about the candidate they're voting for. If they vote for Trump just because they hate Hillary, that's not a good reason. You have to actually know what these people stand for. And some of these people who voted, I have to admit, I'm not going to shame them and name names, but they never even watched a debate. They got all their news from Facebook or the some other internet source. And we know now that some of those sources on Facebook and on the internet were fueled by Russia. They were not American citizens saying, beware of Hillary Clinton. She's going to be indicted. She's going to go to jail, lock her up. Those were Russians pretending to be Americans, pretending to support Donald Trump. And here's something else we should be very terrified of. Again, a personal story. You say, oh, I don't know anybody who said their vote didn't count. Hey, I have a story. And you guys maybe don't know me, but you see me. I invite you into my living room every time I do a show. I feel like I know many of you. So I'm going to tell you a personal story about my husband and I when we went to vote on November 8th, 2016. My question is, how do we know that if they had fake American ID, and fake American social security numbers. How do we know that some of these Russian actors didn't actually vote? Here's something that I want to tell you about. My husband and I went to vote together on November 8th. Both of us were planning to vote for Hillary Clinton. My husband is actually registered a Republican. I am registered Democrat. Because he knew he was going to vote for a Democrat, my husband did not vote in the primaries, okay, because he would have had to vote only for some bizarre reason. If you are registered Republican, you can only vote in the Republican primary. You can't vote in the Democrat primary. That should, law should be changed as well because people have a right to change their affiliation and their minds without having to re-register to vote. Anyway, when we got to the voting, the voting place, I went through no problem. But when my husband looked at the books, there's a book and it shows the last time you voted and your signature because you sign your name. 
My husband looked down and said, this is not my signature. And I didn't vote in the primaries. Now, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I am planning to contact the election officials in our town to ask about this. I'm not sure if what this meant was that somebody used my husband's name to vote in the primary and vote Republican or not. All I know is my husband immediately said, this is not my signature. And the people at the polls said, okay, ma'am, you go and vote. We're going to investigate this and your husband needs to wait. And he waited about 25 minutes. They made some phone calls and they acted like it was not a big deal. And at that time, it wasn't. They said, sir, you're fine. We know this is you. Sign and go vote. And he did. Now, my question is, did his vote count? That vote for Hillary, did it count? And we were talking about this the other night, and I said, you know, I think now, knowing what we know, and that your signature was obviously signed by someone not you, someone voted under your name. Now, how they did that, see, this is why those of you who don't think you should have photo ID, real ID to vote, this is why it's important. Because in Pennsylvania, you do have to bring your driver's license, your ID. And now, after Hillary lost, but didn't lose, I mean, she won popular, but lost electoral, and now we know that there were bad actors involving themselves trying to make sure Hillary, I'm not saying they wanted Trump, they tried to make sure Hillary did not get elected. Now I'm starting to wonder if that fraudulent signature in that book here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, doesn't mean a little bit more than we thought it did. We brushed it off. We thought, oh, no big deal. Hillary's going to win. Because at that point, Hillary was going to win. This is why you should never make assumptions. And that's why if you really care about a candidate, you need to go out and vote. Because a lot of people stayed home on November 8th because they were assured that there was no way Hillary could lose. So they didn't bother going out and waiting in the long lines. We waited. I didn't like waiting. I never like waiting, but I'm so glad I voted. But now I do worry if my vote counted, especially since I know with all the stuff in the news about the redistricting redistric of Pennsylvania, that for some reason my city, which is very much, it runs Democrat. We have a Democratic mayor. This is a very progressive city. We, we embrace gay rights. We embrace the right to choose here in Lancaster City. So the fact that my city was in red on this last map, that scares me too, because does my vote count if Lancaster City is just always going to go red and go to the Republicans in Electoral College? That doesn't make any sense. What does it matter if my city is red if everybody in my city votes blue for a Democrat? That shouldn't matter. So that scares me, too. And I don't understand it. A lot of this redistricting and the way the maps are, I don't know why it matters so much. But it really matters to the Republicans because they're pissed. They are upset that Pennsylvania's map changed last week. And it took our Supreme Court to do it because the Republicans refused to allow it. So they're scared now, and I'm not sure why, because again, if every vote counts and more people vote Democrat in, say, Philadelphia or Lancaster, then what does it matter if on the map the Philadelphia or Lancaster is red? It shouldn't matter, right? So I don't understand that. Maybe some of you smarter people than me can, can explain that to me, the redistricting, the, the way maps are drawn, Republican or Democrat. Every vote should count. So if you don't think that this Russian issue is your problem because your guy won this time, you better be very afraid for next time. Because next time someone could be running that you really, really think is the best person for the job. But Vladimir Putin is afraid of that person and it could all happen again. 
Only this time it'll be your vote that is messed with. Your mind freaked out by fake news on Facebook or on the internet. Actors telling you that your candidate, the one you really like, is a criminal and is probably going to end up in jail or charged with treason. Got to be careful. Every vote needs to count. Got to remember who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Vladimir Putin, who has never lost an election, not because he gets the most votes, but because all of his opponents have accidents or fall out of windows or get really, really sick or are mugged on the street and shot in the head. That's happened as well. It's very dangerous in Russia to oppose Vladimir Putin. We would like to think here in America that we're different, that we have the right to choose who leads our country and to choose it diplomatically, that every vote counts, that no one is allowed to vote twice, no one is allowed to vote when they're dead. And yes, I do disagree with the Democrats. I do believe that you must show ID to cast a vote in this country. And I will be investigating what happened to my husband when he saw that his signature had been forged on a voter book. And I will report to you what I find out because I am planning to do that this very day. Because I do think now something that was just a snafu has become something more. And it could actually mean that my own husband and I were the victims of voter fraud. And that our votes didn't count. And for as long as we waited and as passionate as we felt about our vote. And again, we didn't actually vote for Hillary. But we voted against Donald Trump because he scared us. He scared us both. And if our vote didn't count as passionately as we were about it that we did not want Donald Trump to be our president, then what is the point of even ever voting again? And for me and my husband, I mean, I, I do a political talk show, for God's sake. And my husband served bravely and honorably in the Marine Corps. For us to say we might not vote, that's egregious. That is sacrilege in this house. And yet, if our vote isn't going to count, why should we waste our time? And if Americans start to feel that voting is just a waste of their time and that other countries are going to choose our president for us or Facebook is going to choose our president for us or any news media outlet, for that matter, is going to influence the way the elections go, well, then we're not much better than Russia, are we? Political Paula, out.